Hi guys, Adam here with ADML Photography and today we're going to do another product review. Today we're looking at uh, a lens by Venus Optics. It's the, uh, the lower 15mm f4 wide angle one to one macro lens. Um, I just picked this lens up uh, about a month ago, had a little bit of a chance to play around with it, um, try it out. Now, I'll start off by saying I'm not a macro photographer, I don't have a, much of a background in macro photography but um, quite interested in wide angle macro because it uh, just has a little bit more of a dynamic look, something that uh, uh, just offers a few more variations to, uh, to my portfolio and things I can work with. One of the things I'm really interested in using this lens for prior to purchasing it uh, is video work. Um, I want to try it out uh, doing some macro video and uh, having the wide angle will really hopefully punch that up. Um, now I've had a chance to play with the, uh, the lens for a while. Um, I've got a few things to talk about, a few comments on it, positives and negatives as with everything. Um, and I'm going to uh, basically lay them out as honestly as possible. Now, let me just start by saying that uh, I, I'm not affiliated with uh, Venus Optics at all, so there's no bias in this. Um, basically, when you get the lens, it, it's a very sol solidly built lens. Um, uh, metal construction, uh, very smooth uh, focusing and uh, aperture controls on it. Uh, it's quite heavy for the size. It's only a small lens, as you can see here. Um, and, uh, yeah, construction-wise, really well built. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, it, it's got like this uh, tilt shift switch here, so you can switch um, the lens uh, a little bit vertical or, or horizontally or whichever way you've got it set. I think it's just vertically, yeah. So vertically along this axis here, um, which is great when you're when you're shooting, um, you know, buildings, etc. Uh, basically, normally with a wide angle, as you shoot uh, a straight structure like a building, uh, it'll tend to look like it's leaning away from the camera, and by adjusting uh, this little tilt shift switch here, it, it brings it to a more vertical, uh, natural looking uh, perspective uh, when you've got the image finished. So that's, uh, that's a nice bonus, especially in a uh, lens in this price bracket, which is a, yeah, I think about $400 to $500. So most of the tilt shift lenses you're looking at are uh, much higher cost. Uh, granted, a lot of the other tilt shifts are a lot more dynamic and much more useful than this one, but to have that functionality just adds a little extra something to the lens to give it a little bit more usefulness. Um, when you when you buy a lens, this is what you get. You get your uh, you know your rear cap, your front cap, and this big sort of uh, pedal bayonet uh, lens hood on there. Um, if you're planning to try to do any kind of one-to-one -one macro with this lens, this is the first thing you want to do is take that off and just put it somewhere because it's absolutely useless. Um, however, the lens itself is incredibly sharp. I mean, slight little big netting um, and you know a, a little bit of softness in the corners, but that's you know you're talking a 15 mil lens in macro it's uh you know that's just going to happen um as far as going to one to one uh in order to to shoot this at one to one you essentially need to be just your subject has to be basically uh, like a millimeter almost touching the front element so where this causes a problem for example if you're trying to shoot insects or you know animal life at one to one you're going to have to have this camera almost touching them now there's not too many insects that I've come across that will kind of let you do that without moving out of the way. Being a manual focus lens and an incredibly shallow depth of field when you're dealing with macro, uh, it's, it's very hard to get that pinpoint accuracy on your subject without them moving, moving away. However, a much bigger problem is once you get the subject that close to the lens, getting light between the front element and the subject without flaring and glaring is very hard. It's, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to really illuminate your subject now, I guess one of the solutions to that would be to have like a ring flash system or um, setting some sort of light right here on this front element. But even so, your light has to penetrate a very narrow plane between the subject and the front element, um, and you're going to get shadows. It's very hard to not uh, uh, to illuminate properly. Um, backlighting seems to be one of the best ways to work with it, uh, but that's an effect that maybe you don't want to be using for every shot. So. You're going to have to get creative if you want to try to go one to one. When you um, when you pull it out a little bit and start going, say, at four to one or eight to one, then you start getting a little bit of distance in here, and you also get more of a wider perspective. Even though it's still shooting at 15 mil when it's one to one, it doesn't give you that really wide perspective because you're so close. Um, but by slightly dulling back the magnification, going say at eight to one, etc., um, or uh, sorry, point eight to one or point four to one. Um, you, you just get that little bit more of a wider angle 
feel to the shot. So I found that that seems to work a little bit better and allows you to get a little bit of light between the lens and the subject. So that's one of the main uh, issues I've found with the, the lens itself is um, you have to just be so close that it, it's almost, uh, you're almost lucking out a little bit when you do get uh, an insect that is frozen still, maybe because they're scared or trying to hide or not be noticed. Um, and they will freeze eventually, but uh, a lot of the times they'll move. Um, I had a praying mantis I was shooting the other day. I did manage to get a really good shot of it, but uh, it basically was attacking the front element of my lens, um, which made, yeah, made for an interesting couple of photos. But um, again, trying to get that focus when it's such a shallow depth of field as well is very difficult. Now I found that by putting this on my Nikon D750 with the, uh, the articulating screen, I'm able to put it into live view, have the screen down like this, and sort of move the, the camera closer while I'm monitoring what I'm doing. Now it is a totally manual lens. So the aperture, uh, aperture ring here at the front between uh, f4 to f32, very short uh, spool on that, um, but it's very smooth. That's your aperture controls, and basically when you increase your magnification, or your, it's kind of like focusing um, to increase your magnification uh, on this dial here. But other than that, essentially it's manual focus. So what you really want to do is figure out what kind of magnification you're looking for and then just move your camera in slowly, looking for that sweet spot and snap the shot. Um, so a fair bit of work that goes involved with it, that's involved with this lens. Um, but you know, that's part of the challenge of macro photography as far as I see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm getting. Um, haven't had a lot of time to, uh, to shoot with it, just been very busy of late. But uh, the few shots I have taken with it I've been quite happy with. On a different note, um, when ordering uh, this lens, uh, I bought the lens, um, I received, I think, what I got model 857. Um, so I ordered the lens from their website, paid for it, I think, through PayPal, um, and didn't receive any feedback from the company. There was no you know, uh, hey, confirmation of purchase or shipping information, all that. Nothing was sent to me, um, which uh, made me quite nervous because I, I had paid for the item but received uh, no verification from the company. So I tried contacting him through Facebook, through emails, received no reply. Um, and uh, because it was uh, kind of back ordered uh, and I was waiting, I don't think they had enough of them produced, so I had to wait for the third round of deliveries. Um, I was really, really uh, concerned with whether or not I was getting ripped off here. Um, but as it turned out, the lens just one day appeared on my doorstep and uh, that was, uh, yeah, everything that they said was going to be in the package was there, it was in, uh, there was no damage, there was, uh, uh, you know, nothing dodgy about it, but it did feel really dodgy, so if you do go to purchase the lens, be prepared for that experience. Um, I'm not sure if that happened with everybody, but it definitely happened for me. Um, other than that, uh, not much to talk about with the lens, I mean, it, it's a fun little lens, you can use it as a wide angle, you don't have to shoot it uh, as a macro lens, so it does have that bonus of being a 15mm f4 lens, which is, you know, it's a nice wide angle lens to shoot. As I said before, the tilt shift makes it great for shooting some architectural stuff. Um, I plan to uh, try it out for some, uh, some time lapses in the city and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, no real complaints about the lens itself. So that's my little take on this lens. If you are looking for it, be prepared. It's not going to be as simple as just getting really nice one-to-one -one wide angle straight up the bat. Uh, most likely you're going to be shooting more around the 0.4 to 1 or the somewhere in between the 0.4 to the 0.8 to 1 um, in order just to light your subject. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of my take on that lens. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. As always, please uh, hit the, the uh, subscribe button and um, happy shooting.